All right, Facebook Live audience, it's the 2017 Grey Cup Summit, and uh, we rec recruited a guy, uh, Jed Tommy. Many of you don't know, he's a Guelph Griffin, and, and it's a perfect segue into connecting with our next guest via Skype, and that is Thomas Dimitrov, the general manager of the Atlanta Falcons. Thank you for joining us, Thomas. And again, happy Thanksgiving to you and your family uh, south of the border, and congratulations on your big win over the Seattle Seahawks on Monday night. That was a big win. I appreciate it, and thanks for having me on. Let's first talk about athlete performance. We're talking about youth sport, and I know that you have a vision beyond the pro level, and you know you have an influence on the, the, the kids' game. In terms of athlete performance and return to play, what is your position? You know, when I interviewed for this job in, in Atlanta back in 2008, it was one of the things that was very strong on my mind about where we were with athletes, return to play, athletic performance, the, the chasm between, quite honestly, the medical side and the football side was always a, uh, an issue with me. And when I interviewed with Arthur Blank at the time, one of my big selling points really had very little to do with my ability to scout and put together teams, but it had a lot more to do with thinking a little bit outside the box, or probably at that time a lot more outside the box than, than a lot of other general managers, because it was all about making sure that we were treating the players right. It was all, quite honestly, about, without being hokey, there was an element of, of body, mind, and soul that I believe that we could bring to the NFL and still be very, very successful and not just think we needed a whole bunch of rogue individuals playing the game until they, they fell over. So I've always believed very strongly in that. Um, we put together a, a program early on in 2008 when I did get the job. And quite honestly, Arthur shared with me, Arthur Blank shared with me, it was one of the main reasons that I did get the job was because of my my vision, you know, for athletic performance and the and the evolving element of athletic performance in the NFL. Very quickly after that, as a matter of uh, fact, probably two years after that, ended up having an uh, opportunity to hire Marty Lazan, who you'll also talk with here, and you know, uh, in my mind, he's a world-renowned um, therapist, uh, athletic performance. He is in charge of all of our athletic performance, as well as being an amazing trainer. So I feel like we have a really good team in place at the top with with our owner and our head coach who believe in the same as I do as far as making sure that the players are treated well, making sure that we do all we can to make sure that they're on the field. And we think that we set a great example for, for youth football, which we can obviously get into as we go on. Tommy, I just want to thank you very much. I mean, and being so proactive and making sure those messages are filtered down in the Atlanta area where our application has actually been well endorsed by some 30 high schools. We're, we're really pleased that you partnered with us at this point and, and just want to say thank you on that behalf to you and your family. But also want to say, are there any other best practices that you feel, whether it be Pop Warner or the Tykes and the Eagles, that you think that you can share with us that people could take away today? Well, I, again, we're, we're very involved and Marty is very involved with where we are from, the, from a youth standpoint. And Marty can expound on that as well. Again, this all comes down from the very top. It comes down from the league top. It comes down from Arthur Blank and where we are with the head coach, how we uh, you know, include you know, the youth, place 60 programs, and how we in include the, the youth in knowing more and more about what we're doing inside of our walls and what Marty's doing with our return to play and the importance of you know, getting players back on the field and how important it is not to um, – basically push them if they're not ready. And we are very aware of that. And Marty is very aware of that. And, and again, I can't wait for Marty to expound upon it because he is a guy that has such a firm grasp and understanding of, of where youth football is and youth hockey. He's a very proud Canadian, as you know, and, and uh, we see it all the time. He's always uh, flying his flag in our building for sure. And uh, again, just very proud to have him on board with us. Was there your sort of that Jerry Maguire aha moment from you to make that sort of that that shift from traditional football approach, uh, because you've been a football guy f through and through, and many of you don't know in this locker room, Thomas, you have connections here at Ottawa because your dad was a coach with the Ottawa Rough Riders. In fact, you started your hockey career at McNabb Arena playing for Minute Car Wash. And so, <laughs> sport, and then you played with Guelph, but for you, was there a moment where you said, I need, there's other best practices that I think I can develop and introduce that'll make a football team successful at the most elite level be in the National Football League? Kenny, look, I, I, again, I had been born into this sport. From the day I was born, my dad was a football coach. I had an opportunity to be around it at all levels. I had an opportunity to be around, honestly, massive egos in this business that I thought were sort of, uh, without spinning off, 
sort of deleterious to the health and well-being of, of, of an organization. I just thought it wasn't at times right how we approach things in general. I started thinking more and more, as I uh, alluded to earlier, about where we were with everything, not just your body, but your mind, where your soul is. And, and as a general manager, I thought if ever to be in, a, in this seat, to have an opportunity to affect change, that I was going to do all in my power to make sure that we had the right people around us, i.e. Marty Lazon, and the right people speaking to uh, people in the organization, within in the league, as well as to our owner, when I'm speaking to him, um, to have a, a, an owner like Arthur Blank behind us as much as possible is massive at so many levels. So as I started thinking more and more about that, I thought, look, we can win with guys who are very cognizant of everything and not just, again, running through a wall because they think that's the way to perform. Um, I think we've become much more intelligent at all levels in sport. And I think our intelligence, quite honestly, is is um, is being disseminated within this uh, youth sport and where we are, you know, in discussing a lot of different things at a lot of different levels, youth sport, high school, college. And I think it's really important. And it really does come down from all of the, the leaders within our league and within our organizations. I think it's really refreshing and exciting and inspiring to hear at the elite level that, that we've got that value consciousness that we're sharing down to youth. And I just applaud yeah. what you're doing in Atlanta, Thomas, and I look forward to Marty as well. You know, Thomas, with that said, though, if you don't win football games, right, then you're right. Gonna, you're going to be right, – the doubters will pursue you. So you had to win some football games to, to sort of see that shift successfully come to be. Well, Jed knows this. I mean, and, and Kenny, I believe you do. Of course, you played a long time. I mean, yes, it's important, but ultimately, if we can keep the players on the field – then we're going to be successful. We've paid a lot of money. We have $170 million salary cap, uh, which I know that's a little bit different than, than, than uh, other sports, of course. And a little we, bit different yeah, than the well, CFL, I'd say that. Yeah. And, and, and interestingly enough, we're very mindful of it doesn't matter if, the, if, if a player is making $25 million a year or whether he's making you know $450,000 a year. For, for our league, we're very, very mindful that everyone has a position on the field that's going to be important for us to win whether he's a starter like Matt Ryan or Julio Jones or whether he's a role player, we need to make sure that everyone is on the field and we maximize their time on the field, keep them on the field, return to play as efficient and expeditious. And that's pressure on Marty, of course. And we talk about it all the time, but he's yeah. such a patient uh, man. So that's a good thing. But I think in the end, it is for us and for me to make sure that we keep people on the field and we're going to perform at our highest level. That's where we're going to have wins. That's where the owner is going to be happy and the fan base is going to be happy. And I believe the way you do that is with cutting edge information, cutting edge approaches to health and well-being. And, and there's no way around that. We, we can get into this or we can't get into this, quite honestly. But in the past where things were 10, 15, 20 plus years ago, and you both know because you guys played at a professional level and you understand the time spent and, and, and the wear and tear on your body, I'm just amazed and happy that we have broken through that, that sort of uh, barrier about being uh, that much more, how do I put it, uh, that much more civilized in our approach to this game because I think it is an amazing game. I'm speaking about football in general. And I think uh, we've come so far with it. And, uh, and I love the fact that we're doing things, Kenny and Jed, from a, from a league standpoint and a rule standpoint. Okay, at first it was a little tough, right? We were used to seeing – crunch course and all these amazing TV programs. And we were on the edge of our seat watching all of this, the physicality of this league. And then you, then when they started changing some of these rules, it was, it was tough to stomach a little bit because you thought, well, this is, this is this game back to your point, Ken. Yes, that's tough. You get old school people in this business and they fight it. However, they're realizing more and more. And one of the things that is, is the best for this league is that we are protecting the quarterback. So for us, we don't see a whole bunch of, you know, third and fourth string quarterbacks playing. No offense to them, they have their place. But our league was not thriving when we were playing with quarterbacks that weren't uh, adept enough to be on our field. Let me ask you one more question. I'll let you go to your uh, Thanksgiving dinner. Um, the CFL introduced a rule, a change in that contact was banned during practice. Uh, and it is a byproduct of the fact that they were playing a compressed schedule with three games in 12 days. And... Uh, it sort of came out of the blue, and it was adopted immediately. Uh, would that work in the NFL based on your schedule and, and based on how things are set up south of the border? Respectfully speaking, I, I don't think that would be the approach that would be um, accepted here. I think, I think we're very, very mindful. And, and I, again, I step back 
big picture on my mind all the time when I'm watching Marty function on the field, you know, as our trainer and our head of athletic performance and watching our head coach navigate. And, and I, I'm, I'm amazed because it's not easy. I mean, one of the things that Dan had to deal with early on in this season, Dan Quinn I'm talking about, was some of the changes that were tough for a, for a head coach that is so fiery and driven as Dan Quinn is and is, is about, you know, not just contact, but, you know, just, just the enthusiasm on the field. That's not easy as a head coach. It's not easy for a guy like Marty Lazon walking around the field trying to keep our players in, 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 in check and everything. For us, the no contact thing, we have pared it down a great deal. And, it, and it's been a challenge for everyone, quite honestly. Has it been good in certain situations? Yes, of course it has. Has it been challenging for other people who, quite honestly, have been wanting more contact because our football players at time believe if they have the proper padding, the proper helmets, which we're going a long way in, in that direction for the good, of course, that they can continue to, to develop, right? We feel like if there's no contact at all, that we are, are struggling a little bit with the development of our both of our lines, for instance, right, where there is a lot of contact. So let's let's manage it properly, be very, very keen on it, and be, be very uh, acute with our vision of how we're approaching it and how we are, are uh, correcting things. But let's make sure that we're still developing as players. And we do believe as you are being somewhat physical, not overly physical, you can continue to grow and learn so that the first time you're not being physical and, and dealing with contact is on the field in the game. All right, hey, Thomas, uh, Jed's got his last final word before he say goodbye. My final word was Thomas, uh, the specialty that people are, are starting to do in sports. Um, uh, you as a scout, when you were coming up through through the Cleveland Browns and then with Bill Belichick and then, and then on through, how much, how important was it that players play multiple sports, that they be more well-rounded? Um, did that, how much did that affect your, 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 your look at them in terms of their value to the and team? Your, and your draft strategy. Well, I mean, that's a, that's a great, great question, Jed. And, and it has always been at the forefront of anything we've ever discussed, even more so in today's game, versatility, versatility, versatility. We stress that all the time. We stress an offensive lineman has to be able to play a tackle position and possibly the other tackle position. Our guards have to play center. Our, our corners also have to play potentially safety or they have to be a nickelback as well as an outside corner. Our quarterbacks, well, they're making a lot of money, so all they really need to do is play quarterback, of course. <laughs> but I will, I will say versatility is key, and I say that for youth. Like, I remember that. I remember people saying, well, we just need to focus our youth on gymnastics or wrestling or taekwondo or, in, in this case, football. And, and quite honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm vehemently opposed to that. I just think it's so important to, to work at all levels, and I would say that to – to my son who's 10, or I would say it to people who I understand when you're really honed in and you have a special uh, uh, athlete that may be the best in the world at archery or something, I get that. But for most of us, I think being very versatile and being very flexible in your sport and your athleticism, I'm a huge believer, by the way, that this is a starting point for me and my scouting over the many years and now as a general manager. It is unbelievably important for me to evaluate athleticism, movement, fluidity of movement, because in our league, it is a matchup league. And if you can't move and you are rigid and straight line, um, figuratively and literally speaking, uh, I don't think you're going to thrive in this league. So that speaks to all levels of, of sort of being versatile, Jed. All right. Excellent. All right, Thomas, listen, get back to your Thanksgiving dinner. On behalf of everybody here at the summit, we want to say thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Tom Dimitrov. Thank you. Appreciate Great it. Great job. Thank you. And Thank go get those Buccaneers on Sunday. <laughs> go get those Bucks. Thank you. All right. Okay. Take care. Thanks, Thomas. Everybody okay? That's Thomas Dimitrov, obviously GM of the Atlanta Falcons.